Hi, and welcome to the Veterans Quarter. My name is Chuck Wooden, and as always, I'll be your host for this evening. We've got a special uh, group of people from the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, we've got, uh, to my left, we've got uh, Captain Joseph Sanborn. Uh, he's a coordinator for the uh, Reefs Across America uh, and cemeteries in Middletown and Rocky Hill. Uh, welcome, welcome, Joe. Thank you for uh, having us. To my right, uh, we have Joshua Ellis. He is the uh, second lieutenant, cadet second lieutenant, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I knew I'd get it. Uh, he's a, a cadet commander, uh, Joshua. Nice to have Thanks you. Thanks for having us. And on the other side of the table, we have April, Major April uh, Crossan. Crossan. Uh, she is the deputy commander for cadets, uh, April. Pleasure to have you. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, actually a couple topics today. We're going to be talking about the Civil Air Patrol, and we're also going to be talking about Reefs Across America. Uh, most of you uh, probably have heard about both of them, uh, especially just recently, Reefs Across America. It was uh, it was all over the news. Uh, but let's let's start off by talking about the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, what is the Civil Air Patrol Cadet Program? Uh, Joshua, you, you got that? Uh, yes, the Civil Air Patrol is a cadet program for um, people ages 12 to 18 uh, for the cadet side of the Civil Air Patrol. Um, we do uh, military customs and courtesies, hold rank and grade, um, t do aerospace education and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, and that's really what the cadet program is all about. It's uh, uh, an another question for you. I mean, what have you learned from the cadet uh, uh, Civil Air Patrol uh, program that is related to Reefs Across America? The Civil Air Patrol teaches us a lot of um, respect for the veterans that have come uh, before us yeah. and uh, to honor the veterans. Um, and that's something we constantly do in the Civil Air Patrol and something we do lots of with the Reefs Across America. Yeah. It, you know, it's you're involved with this. What does your participation in Reefs Across America actually mean to you? Uh, what it means to me is just being able to um, honor the veterans, teach the youth about um, what it means to uh, serve, and what it means to show respect to the veterans. Yeah. And, and you know, let's get into the Civil Air Patrol itself, uh, April. Uh, what is the Civil Air Patrol? Well, Civil Air Patrol is the auxiliary of the United States Air Force. Okay. And we are a total force, so we're actually airmen. Uh, there are over 1,600 squadrons throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, and in some other countries. Um, we have three key missions, um, emergency services, aerospace education, and our cadet program. Yeah. And under that umbrella, we do disaster relief, um, we do staffing of, say, places like Red Cross, yeah. um, storm damage, just what you've seen with the hurricanes and the ice uh, here, right here in Connecticut. We actually will be up in the airplanes, flying over, um, taking videos, sending them to places like DEP and FEMA. So no matter what the situation is, we have that covered. Bird's eye view. Absolutely. I've seen some pictures of those and uh, yeah. the ice jams, and especially on the Connecticut River. Yes. Uh, I saw one the other day. It almost looked like a, a glacier coming down to the bridge. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing, and it, it's it's a wonderful feeling for us to be able to get out there and help the community. And we've done things like uh, hurricanes, all the hurricanes, uh, follow up disaster relief for the people there. We actually can go out door to door and find out if people need water, yeah. uh, in conjunction with other state and uh, community. Agencies. Just, just out of curiosity, you're talking about you know getting up in the air and doing that. Mm -hmm. where, where do you fly out of? Uh, we have several airports. Uh, one, our mission is are flown out of uh, Hartford, Connecticut, right at Brainerd Airport. Okay. Uh, we have a fleet of there's five airplanes here in Connecticut, but across the nation we have hundreds of airplanes. Yeah. And we. Um, 
they have special equipment in them for photography and also for locating, say, downed aircraft or someone lost. Search and rescue. Yes, and absolutely. Uh, Joshua, how, how do you think the Civil Air Patrol prepares teens uh, to participate and understand the message behind Reese Across America? Um, a lot of what we do, or part of what we do at the Civil Air Patrol is customs and courtesies. Yeah. Showing respect to people through um, minor things, um, sir, ma'am, uh, lieutenant, major. Um, it instills a sense of respect in a lot of the kids that join um, Civil Air Patrol and I really think that Reese Across America is a lot to do with the respect factor of that. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing. I mean, how many times have you heard, you know, every, yeah. every, you know, uh, everybody should serve in the military well, we uh, also to, have to get that guard. discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's fine. We also have a color guard, yeah. um, which we participate in Reese Across America. Uh, we present the colors, the United States flag, and I think learning to do that as whether it's that or we can act have actually also done um, funerals. Yeah. So whether you're honoring, you know, active members or retired. Yeah. I, I, I personally was on the an honor guard uh, uh, for a number of years. Uh, I say a number of years, two or three years. Uh, so I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, I've probably done over 100 you know, funerals. Mm -hmm. um, Reefs Across America, April, uh, can you tell us some history? Where and when did it start? Well, it was actually started about a week before Pearl Harbor in 1941. And a group of civilian pilots, those that were not, you know, getting drafted or whatever, um, had great memories of World War I and the U-boats. And they said, there's no one watching our shores. We've got all our guys geared up and ready to go to, you know, wherever a war is. But we have no one watching our own shores. So they banded together, they formed it, and they were uh, chartered in 1941. Wow. And this, they actually used their own civilian airplanes. And that was what our coastline, and we have a huge coastline down the East Coast and Gulf. And I don't know if you know that so many um, transport vehicles with commodities were sunk during World War II. And Civil Air Patrol themselves sank two U.S., uh, two German submarines. So it was, um, it all started from there and then it has morphed and I think it was 1946 that we actually became part of the Air Force. Yeah. And that's when we were started to be given planes and resources. It's, uh, I mean, it, a lot, these shows, are, it, it's a great thing that we're doing them because it, it lets the viewers, I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're not aware of this. Uh, well, we're, we're also considered the best kept secret because although we've been around all this time, we've had a cadet program since the 1960s, very few people really understand what we do and the opportunities. Um, our cadets get to fly um, 10, 10 flights before they turn 18, yeah. where we actually get them up in the aircraft and let them take control. You know, it's, uh, you know <laughs> I, I got to throw a little humor in here uh, because there's, I haven't flown since uh, the 80s, I think. Um, Good luck to you. <laughs> I'm one of those that yeah. stays on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could. I mean, some, some of the some of the views that I've seen, uh, you know. But hats off to you, uh, Joe. Uh, Reese across America. Uh, this is this has been a, a something that I know you've been extremely passionate about. Uh, I personally have. I mean, I was a district commander for the American Legion. Uh, I think it was 14 to 15, uh, 2013, to, uh, 14 to 15, somewhere around that area. And it was really when I first started hearing about it. Uh, not until this year where I had the honor of coming down and seeing you in Middletown, and, and I kicked myself because uh, I lost a few years where, you know, I, I should have been there. Um, where, uh, tell us a little bit about the history of, of uh, Reese Across America, actually where, where and when it started. Reese Across America was uh, all started from a concept of a young man, nine-year-old paper boy in Bangor, Maine, uh, Moral Worcester, who was the founder of Reese Across America. Uh, he, when he was nine years old, he uh, took a trip to Arlington and visited Arlington National Cemetery. And visiting the cemetery left an indelible impression upon him that he never forgot. Uh, he carried it with him through his life. Um, 
as an adult, he had a wreath company up in Harrington, Maine, called Worcester Wreath. And in 1992, uh, he had a surplus of about 5,000 wreaths. And he began to think about Arlington and wanted to place those wreaths in Arlington. And with the help of then Senator Olympia Snow, it was worked out so that the wreaths could be placed in a uh, section of the cemetery that's less uh, visited. It's becoming more and more uh, less people are visiting it each year. And he placed the wreaths there, and he, he continued to do this quietly for a number of years. As you know, we didn't have a lot of internet in 1992. No. Uh, if it wasn't in the newspaper or on TV, you didn't hear about it. And uh, so Morrill, uh, he uh, continued it on. And in 2005, a picture, a photograph circulated on the internet of the wreaths with the snow and the, the red bows on them. It was a very beautiful photograph. And that inspired other people to want to become involved in it. And it, 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 we're, we're, it, you're talking, it, it originated in Maine. Um, I've seen a lot of the, the, the unbelievable uh, video shots of, of them actually transporting them. Now, with that being said, I mean, do all the, the wreaths, do they come from Maine? Yes, they do. Every single one of them. Nationwide? Nationwide. Uh, worldwide. Worldwide. Is there any trees left? <laughs> well, absolutely, because we have a pro uh, Reese Cross America has a program ca called From Stem to Stone. Yeah. Uh, these are all balsam fir, and uh, the actually when you cut the uh, bough for the wreath, it actually grows back twice the size it was before. So, the, you know, this, it's a it's more like a farm. Yeah where uh, you're not depleting the resource. I've, I've heard that, and, and that's why I wanted to, wanted to ask you that question, because, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, not, yeah, you're not depleting uh, the resources. I mean, the trees are there. Uh, not only are they there, but they're coming back in a much uh, better... It's like, uh, it's like getting a haircut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what makes these wreaths so special? I mean, a lot of people sit there and say, that, you know, they just go out and buy a wreath. And, and, and they're told that these wreaths, every move or every everything that aspect of putting them together has a meaning. Absolutely, yes. Uh, these are these are these did not uh, come from a grocery store. Uh, they were not made in a factory. Uh, there's a there's a process, and if you're interested in learning about that, it, certainly there's a museum up in Maine. There's. A, uh, that you can tour and learn all about the process because there's quite a process involved with, as I said, the stem to stone, yeah. um, and a lot of individuals involved as well. It's. It, uh, I mean, I, I've seen some of that uh, uh, online where you, where you can actually you can they can find out you know what each move is and, and yes, it's well like I said there's the balsam boughs, yeah. bows, boughs, I don't know what you call them. Uh, there's ten of them on each veteran's wreath. These are Worcester veterans wreaths. These are specific uh, wreaths in memory of fallen heroes. Yeah. Um, and each uh, each of the ten uh, represents a personality trait that every veteran has. It, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, it, it's that's one aspect that we want, we wanted to make sure that we we got out here because you know people don't realize that. You know, it, it's I mean, I mean it, it, it's it's nice that they go out and they, they buy a wreath and they may put it on a veteran's grave site in the cemetery, but you know the thought is there, but the true meaning uh, uh, of what it is, they, sh they should look it up. Absolutely. Um, you know, what, what I, w I was talking about the transporting uh, of the wreaths. Uh, I've seen it, and I'll let you get into it. Uh, I've seen some pretty impressive uh, uh, ways of transporting and, and uh, escorting uh, as they're coming out of a main. Can you go into that? How yes, actually... uh, the, the Arlington uh, escort is, uh, has grown substantially over the years. Uh, it involves uh, state police from a number of states. Uh, the main state police actually travel along all the way to Arlington. As a matter of fact, the uh, convoy came through Connecticut uh, this year, and uh, I was able to uh, 
to attend. It was my first time doing so, where a stopover, uh, and uh, you know, it was uh, with the state police were there from Maine. Um, the uh, Marl Worcester was there. Karen Worcester was there. His wife. Uh, the director was there. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience. Uh, and people uh, line up all over the country alongside the road and they wave flags and it, it's quite a patriotic, uh, uh, if you want to call it, a parade of sorts. Now that was, uh, was that in Middletown or Cromwell? Uh, no, it was, uh, for, it slips in my mind at the moment. Um, I remember the stopover. I seen it advertised. You were advertising yes, on Facebook. Yes, I was there. Uh, it, for some reason, I've had a, a mind block of yeah. where it was located. Hey, it, it, it happens. Uh, but I think I think it was somewhere in central Connecticut where where it was. Yes. But how long has Connecticut been involved with Reach Across America, and and, and who started the movement? Well, actually, uh, it, uh, Connecticut's been involved for quite a while, where the Patriot Guard uh, was involved with the transport itself yeah. as the caravan comes through Connecticut. As far as the local, uh, the local uh, locations, which in this case is Middletown and Rocky Hill, uh, we, uh, that began through actually our former commander, uh, Colonel uh, Anthony Chahaki. Uh, began that, uh, in the inception of that. Uh, it was uh, quite a small uh, event originally with the ceremonial raise only. Yeah. Um, and what he did was he involved other uh, groups, other uh, social uh, groups uh, outside of Civil Air Patrol yeah. to get involved with it to help him out. VSOs. Yes, we had we had uh, American Revolution. Daughters of American yeah. Revolution were, were helpful with that, um, and of course, uh, do little funeral services uh, in Middletown uh, helped a lot with the logistics end of it in the beginning, uh, and they still do to this day. They haven't uh, their uh, their commitment hasn't changed whatsoever. Uh, if anything, gotten more so. That's great. But uh, as time has gone on, we've added more and more uh, groups. And uh, originally started off with, I believe, uh, the, the two, which was DAR and Doolittle doing the prime, the uh, most of the fundraising. Um, now we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 or 14 fundraising groups over the course of uh, since 2012. And, and as you know, I mean, all of you, I mean, it, it, you need all them. Yes. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit as far as what it actually entails. Um, I don't know if, if the viewers know exactly how many veteran cemeteries there are in the state. I mean, there's two of them. There's one in Middletown, that's the, the big one. Uh, and then you've got the one in Rocky Hill across from the Veterans Affairs. We've also got Darien. Darien, there's three. Yes. Well, I just learned something. I, I, I thought there was only two. Uh, you know, I, I should have done my homework. I should know that. <laughs> so it's good to learn. Uh, you know, there's a, I, I was going to ask you, how many grave sites? Uh, I know. Well, I don't know. Darien, is that the smallest one out of the three? or I believe Rock, no, Rocky Hill is the smallest of the okay. three with 1,500, with Darien coming in around 3,000. Wow. And we, we all learned this year how many are in Middletown. Middletown, uh, Middletown actually has about 10,000 uh, graves. However, for the uh, purpose of Reese Across America discussion, uh, we honor all veterans of all uh, religious beliefs yeah. uh, equally, and as when we when we honor these veterans, we respect their religious beliefs, yeah. and there are faiths that do not. Um, uh, it's not part of their uh, religion or belief system to place a, a floral arrangements upon a grave, and that would be our Jewish veterans. Um, so when we do the wreaths across America program and place the wreaths, we place the wreaths. We do not place the wreaths on the Jewish headstones. However, we do visit the Jewish headstones and take a moment to pay our respects to those veterans as well. Silence of prayer. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I don't think people realize how many grave sites there are for our veterans. I mean, to just, and that's just in Connecticut. 
if you look at the magnitude of what we were discussing earlier, how many bows off the, the balsams that you need, uh, I mean, uh, nationwide. Um, I mean, just Arlington alone. How many? Arlington is. Arlington uh, is uh, two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I had the pleasure of going there uh, uh, back when I was stationed in Norfolk, back in the early uh, early eighties. Uh, uh, very impressive. And actually, if you haven't been to the one in Middletown here in, in Connecticut, uh, it's almost a miniature version. The same headstones. Uh, how, how, how can, can you share with the viewers what it takes to make this happen? I, I, you know, I know that's a, 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 an answer. We could probably sit here till tomorrow morning. Uh, I, I know you put a lot of effort into it. Uh, there was, I mean, I constantly saw it. I mean, you know, and it, it was networking. Uh, you know, we all shared your messages out there, uh, but you certainly had your team. You know, to, that that really put the that, that made it happen. Uh, can you share with the viewers what it actually, I mean, from start, what, what, it, what it takes to make this happen? It takes, uh, number one, it takes kicking yourself in the tail. Yeah. It's, it's a very difficult um, process, especially early on in the year. Uh, we're talking January now, it's a little different because we just had an event in December. Yeah. It's still on people's minds, but uh, as spring comes along and summer, people are not necessarily thinking about December. Uh, and a lot of people equate Reese Across America to the holiday season, uh, which it does fall in. Uh, however, Reese Across America is actually a Reese Across America Day is actually a holiday uh, that Congress uh, has uh, uh, put a policy on. I don't know if anyone knew that. No. Yes, it's actually uh, it was voted in Congress uh, for uh, the second or third uh, week uh, Saturday of every December to be designated as National Reese Across America Day, and that does change every year. Uh, for example, this year it was December 16th, last year it was the 17th, and for this, well, I should say for 2017, it was the 16th. For 2016, it was the, I got it backwards, didn't I? 16th for, right. it matter. was the 16th yeah. for 2017, yeah. it was the 17th for 2016, and this year it's going to be on the 15th of December. So, as you can see, it changes quite a bit. And that's, that's obviously when uh, you know, when, when everybody, you know, you get everybody together to have a ceremony, uh, and that's when all the, all the wreaths are uh, placed on each uh, grave site. You know, you know I, I'm, we could talk about this for a long time, as, as most of these shows, we just, it, just time flies. Uh, we probably got about four minutes left, and I just want to, you know, let the viewers know and, and talk to you a little bit about it. You started off with just a few wreaths, and, and, and it, it was a struggle to, to get to that point. This year, you, you, you guys have made, a, I mean, because of all your hard work and the networking, uh, what you accomplished, I say this year, we're already in 2008, right. you know, last a month year. ago, last yes. year, uh, in December, uh, you accomplished something that was uh, amazing uh, with a lot of help, a lot of hard work. Uh, you actually got all, was it 9,500? Uh, yes, we did. We had full coverage, first year ever, 10th uh, anniversary of the event. You know, and on behalf of everyone, I mean, stellar job, congratulations. I mean, it was, uh, you definitely opened up a lot of our eyes uh, to, the, to the, you know, what you do and, and, and reach across America. Uh, each year, I'm sure you, you, you get a caravan of people that just keep adding on and adding on. That's right. Uh, uh, and, and that's what it takes. I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of people to do that. I think the more people, the message gets out in yeah. programs like this, yeah. the more people say, oh my gosh, I wish I'd known about it. I've never seen a crowd like we had this year. It was fabulous. Yeah, it was cold. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was cold. It, it, it was cold. I, I, you know, it, it's, you, you, like I said, you got me. Uh, next year I'll be, I'll be helping you and try to do a little bit more for you as far as you know, American legions in the area. And, um, that, I'm, I'm coming back to that day. I mean, I, when we started off, it was it, it was uh, a little chilly. Then all of a sudden, it started to get the wind picked up. Uh, one thing that, that I had talked to you about, you know, I wanted to have you come on now, and then, you know, sometime maybe around September, 
come on again and start promoting 2018. Uh, you know, so I'd love to have you guys back. We'd like to do uh, that if we can afford that. Yeah, yeah, you'd be consider it done. Uh, there was a few more questions, uh, real fast. Uh, r your goals for next year? I mean, would you like to get Rocky Hill and Darien? Yes, eventually? Rocky Hill. Darien was fed full coverage. Uh, Middletown had full coverage. Rocky Hill has always been a ceremonial only event. Yeah. This will be the first year that it's f going to be a full volunteer event, and we're looking for full coverage, 1,500 wreaths. Aside from that, we would like all wreaths across America at locations in Connecticut to have full coverage, which is going to take a lot of work. You know what? Uh, it's achievable. It is. Uh, you, you, you look, look what you accomplished, and I, I keep I'm repeating myself like a broken record. But you guys deserve, uh, and your team uh, deserve uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, so that's all the time we really have. Uh, uh, like I said, it goes by fast. Uh, I want to thank you for thank being you, here. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, well, uh, as always, uh, it's that time. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we hope we found hope you found it informative. Uh, we thank you for watching. Uh, you know, I have nothing else to say. I mean, I'm, I'm being told I got to get off. So, uh, with that being said, uh, I'm Chuck Wooden from the Veterans Corner. Thank you for watching and good night.